Welcome to the Beehive Network and our last segment of the Weekly Huddle. We are the recovery team, and guys, can y'all believe it is the last segment? We've, we've made it through, and I think I'm the only one who has been correct on all of this. <laughs> you saw at the beginning of the show these guys, the faces of these guys, right? Obviously because it's the last show. Is that the reason why? Or is it because it, it, the Broncos beat up on the guys? Well, it's a little of both. It's a little of both. <laughs> But let's talk about last week's games. Let's talk about, let's start off with the Broncos. Let's, yeah. let's talk about, yeah, you know what, I thought New England would come in there and with all their experience, yeah. and and, you, and we all know they have the players, you know. It, it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> you know, like I said, it was the most celebrated 39-year uh, quarterback, and if you saw, if you heard what he said to Belichick, that this may be his last rodeo. So I was so excited to see Peyton Manning. Uh, be injured, then come back and come back on the field and play the way he has. And just like I had talked about last week, guys, it's defense that wins world championships and defense wins championships, even in the AFC. And every week this week, our defense has showed up. And that's why they're number one or number two in the NFL. And that's going to be the difference in this next coming game. But they played well. You know, there were a lot of mistakes offensively. So that shows that we can go a long mm -hmm. way with making things happen when we get to the Super Bowl. We're kind of hiding back. And things and we'll show up and see the defense did play they came to play oh my goodness and, and, the speed. and, and awesome. new, well yeah new england's their offensive line you yeah. know they just could not handle them yeah you know, it, they, it was like little boys playing with big boys on the, at the tackle positions mm -hmm. and, and you're an offensive line and you know how hard it is to be able to handle defensive ends that are going to come around you with the speed that those guys did yeah but you know what it, as belichick should have helped them you know, you know help them with a running back chipping off on the way out That's you true, know yeah. you, you got to do something to slow down that run well, well yeah, I, th I think, Sean, you would agree. Offensively, they didn't really have a lot except for Gronkowski. Well, you know, I saw a lot of things there. One, defense, of course, you know, they did a great job. I tell you what, the, the one thing I was really impressed with, Manning didn't try to carry the team on his back. No, there were some missed throws, but I think he really humbled himself and said, hey, you know, let me do what I can do, and I'll let the team, you know, ride the defense all the way through. He did. I, I think because before Manning would have made some of them throws, he didn't try to force anything. Mm -hmm. He just really humbled himself, and he did what he can do and he let the defense play ball. And I think that was the most impressive thing I've seen out of guy. And I think, you know, it may be his last rodeo, like he said. So I think I was really impressed with that. But once again, you know, defense, you know, I'm so glad that they really did a great job. And this is the first time I saw Belichick couldn't go in and come out with an adjustment to beat somebody. Right. So, you first know, time. Wade Phillips was really had his, he was really on his game. He called some great defensive, and it just shut the Patriots down. I thought that was an excellent job for the defense. What about those yeah. two guys that be real quiet? Well, you got to understand, they, they <clears throat> did miss up the coverage. They ran dime coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you got to understand, the dime coverage, you get, they got two of the best that's coming off the edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where and what's the other one's name? What's that? What's your other DN name? Uh, we got we had two and a half sacks. Yeah. yeah, two and a half sacks. They was, they was bringing up a straight press. It would have been hard to chip right. if you ain't dime coverage. You that's think true. about it. Yeah. So, hey, I take my hat off on him. I was wrong. I thought New England was going to adjust. And, hey, you, you can go right now. That's right. Go the gloat. Mac, right. what do you think over there, man? We yeah. heard from Grumpy Cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just listening to everyone. You know, Denver defense played very well. Uh, and Peyton, I think right now he's getting into a rhythm. Mm -hmm. He knows when yeah. he's dropping back to pass, he, he just, he's more, more, more comfortable than he normally was. So I'm looking for Denver to actually beat Carolina in the Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah, because that defense, as you mentioned earlier, that defense, they played incredible. Yeah. Uh, Miller, Miller, the and I um, can do it. Well, no, I, I just <laughs> caught it like, caught it like a seed. Uh, That's right. Von Miller, this guy, they couldn't block him. Look at the block. speed of that guy. They yeah. couldn't block him in, and defense actually won that game for the uh, Broncos. Mm -hmm. They have week in and week out. Yeah. You know, the real question about that game to me is, why did Belichick spend the whole first half in a short sleeve blue polo shirt? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was freezing yeah. out there. Well, why I, I did that guy not have on his hoodie that he wears that, during the summer? Yeah. 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 He was trying to have that team. blue collar mentality. Yeah. Man, yeah. We yeah. Those are the kind of questions I have. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the Panthers? I mean, I, I called that one. All right. You, you, know, you did call the Panthers. Cam is amazing, and I, I did a sports uh, uh, talk show talking about Cam and how you know he's very flamboyant, um, but he gives so much back to his team, and he gives so much back to the community. And the way he is with the kids when he gives the footballs after he makes a touchdown, he really involves everyone. But everyone's looking at him like he's a bad guy, and I don't understand that because you have a, a Rodgers who has the double whatever mm -hmm. it's called thing double is, check. and then you have Cam going out there showing his strength, but, I'm but so people are looking at him in a bad right. way and Rodgers in a good light. But I'm really impressed with Cam and, and, and the fun that he's having with the game. Oh, yeah. You know, I think – and it's infectious. It's, it's, it's going through the whole team, the coaches. He's having a great time, and that's what the game is all about. You know, to be out 
out there making the money these guys are making and successful winning. But this team is having a really good time doing what they're doing. And right. I think that's the part that's really um, contagious and the part that looks good to me out yeah. of all this. He's really having a good time. And, I mean, it's easy when you're winning now. Yeah, it's very true. easy. But I think at the end of the day, this guy's just his attitude, you know, throughout the team. The team loves him. The coaches love him. I mean, I think they're going to lose also. Yeah. Uh, I just think, you know, you got a game plan. Um, Cam Newton, you got to. You got to have a spy on him or something to slow him down because he will hurt you with his legs. But other than that, uh, you know, this is, this is a great team, man. I think it's going to be a great yeah. game. You know, even last year, he, um, he had a lot of pressure on him. They didn't play very well, but he mm -hmm. also did not, you know, go away from the type of character that he was going to have making the team that he has this year. Right. Mm -hmm. He stayed true to himself. Yeah, and, he did. and you know what? It, it, with that game, to me, it was not so much about Cam's performance, but about Carson's lack of performance. Yeah, you it's know? turnovers. And, but, the, but the guys had a great year, had one yeah. bad game, but it cost him. It was the biggest game of, of right. his career. So. Right. Well, the game Everything. coming up to that one, and, and I don't know well, if you agree with well, this, but they blew things out, man, was having to score a lot right. of points just to win that ball game Arizona right. did. They couldn't repeat that. Well, you know, Carolina, you, if you notice, Carolina, they've been the kind of team who, during the first half, they'll get a, a substantial lead, and then... During the second half, they'll let down. Yeah. They cannot do that when they play Denver. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the Broncos, Peyton Manning, he's going to keep you in the game. And I think that uh, Carolina, if they get a good lead, they'll become complacent and they will allow Denver to come back and win that ball game. Uh, and yeah. going back to what you mentioned earlier about Cam, I'm not a Cam Newton fan. I think there's a difference between arrogance and having fun. Okay? I, I see, well, when I see him do all the all the jive moves and, and the antics. Did you say jive? Jive, antics. It's going to dab. Whatever that was. You know what? Jive turkey. Whatever you, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you, you want to call it, I, I, I just think that, you know what? You act like you've been there before the end zone. That but things like that are called for. It's a different game, though, It's a different game than what we play. I understand that, Mike. I understand that, but still again, you see you see these, one of the things that aggravates me is I coach high school football. And I see some of my players trying to emulate yeah. him yeah. doing those doing those uh, different moves and things sense. like that. It's, it's no place for it. You know, I had I a coach. I had a coach one one time tell me, you know, when you get in the end zone, act like you've been there before. I understand act that. like you've been there. All this, that, all this putting my shirt uh, open and and. And give my head and all this. Give me, honest, give, honest. Me the, you know, give me the, give me the kids football. Hey, I'm all for that. I am, I am honest all for that. that. But all this uh, uh, fucky, fucky chicken and all this <laughs> other crap. It's Mike like is it's, dating himself, isn't it's, it's, it's 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 for I understand that, man. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm from a little bit of the, the old school era, also. But I played in the '90s with the University of Miami. <clears throat> We used to snatch our helmet, helmets off when we used to celebrate like hell. They started, they changed the rule in the NCAA due to us. And I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. A lot of players play with emotion. And, and, and I see that, that the little dab, it don't came uh, a little trademark throughout this year. I don't see nothing wrong with it, man. But I understand your old school way. No, but I do want to give a uh, well, hold that, that, hold that, that thought, up. and we'll be right back. <laughs> Behavioral Health of the Palm Beaches Recovery Center for Men provides quality, evidence-based treatment to men battling addiction, offering medical detox, expert counseling from licensed clinical therapists, and activity-based therapies. We help men overcome their addiction and rebuild their lives. We understand the unique substance abuse issues that men face and are ready to help you take your life back. Visit rehabformen.com to get your fresh start. Welcome back, and this is a segment that we usually talk about something recovery related, current events recovery related, and and you know, during this segment all year, we've talked about concussions, we've talked about addiction, we've talked about athletes in addiction, we've talked about recovery, what it takes to, to do this process. You know, those those are topics, especially recovery and, and the process of recovery. Those, those are the things that are important to me. So let's talk about that, guys. Throughout, throughout all our segments this year, the different things that we've done and talked about, people we've talked about, we've talked about Manziel, we've talked about Odom, we've talked about Rice, R Ray Rice, yeah, yeah we, we've, we've, we've covered all that. What is the segments that have been the most sensitive to you guys? I think the most sensitive to me, Randy, was when we talked about the uh, underlining issues that happen with athletes and how things can happen at home that you're growing up around, and in particular, I grew up around a lot of domestic violence. And being around domestic violence and it being in the neighborhood, 
and seeing uh, things come out with the Ray, Ray Rice issue kind of reminded me of my history in the NFL and how addiction caused my domestic issues to really come to the forefront of my life. And it wasn't until I had a chance to get the help that I did here at Behavioral Health in the Palm Beaches to realize that these underlying issues were affecting me as a person and as I continue to grow in my sobriety, that those things need to be addressed when you deal with, especially the athletes that are getting in trouble, like a Ray Rice who put his hands on his girlfriend, like Johnny Manziel who put his hands on his girlfriend, and nothing's happening with this. And recovery is very important. And addiction and domestic violence especially, I think go hand in hand. Good, good. Sean? Uh, you know, I, I think the CT was <coughs> my favorite. Um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for guys to get in front of this thing now. Uh, myself, I'm dealing with some concussion issues, so it gives me an opportunity to be proactive, um, going to the doctor, checking things out, see what's going on. So I think that was one of my favorite topics, uh, just to deal with that, to see what's going on with it. It gives a host of guys to go out uh, and give them opportunity to be proactive. To go see the doctor now. We don't have to wait to see what's going on. We can go and get in front of this and see uh, what's going on with us. I think that the biggest thing about this whole thing is that we have an opportunity now. We see the NFL getting in front of this. They got a lot of protocols in place that are helping players out. I think it's a great thing. You know, information is, you know, is key to all this. So I think that was my favorite subject, you know, just being able to talk about that, to get out front, you know, make other guys aware that it's out there. So I think it's a, that was my favorite subject of all. You know, I think I, I heard that um, the uh, NFL player care will be out in Hawaii um, doing a scan, right? And I'm, I'm not sure if that's something that they'll be checking players out mm -hmm. and, and talking about and making people aware of what's happening with, with uh, the CTE. Well, the, the, and it's, it's a lot going on right now. I, I mean, I know Tulane University in New Orleans, they do a brain and body scan for the ex-players. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic is also doing something. So if you go on the website with the trust, there's a lot of stuff on there for players to get out in front of this thing, to get themselves checked out, you know, just a brain and body, you know, physical. So I think the NFL is doing a great job by, you know, putting this information out there and guys can go get checked now. We don't have to wait till it's too late. And, and, and those, those, are, those are our mm -hmm. friends at the Player Care yeah. Foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Right? absolutely. And, our, and our best friend, Dana Lee. Our That's best right. Friend. Who is in the house today. <laughs> yes, she is truly my best friend, trust right. me. <laughs> I, our best friend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what about you, Matt? Oh, I, for me, one of the uh, segments that really stands out for me uh, is the uh, Johnny Manziel uh, saga that we've uh, all shared about all year long um, to the point where I think that, as I mentioned several times, his career, I think his career is over at Cleveland, um, but more so, in, more so than his career, I'm more concerned with his life yeah. in terms of his problems, his personal problems. I would certainly love to see Johnny get his life in order in terms of be it drinking, domestic violence, or whatever the issues might be, get his life in order, and then come back and be the kind of football player that he's capable of being. Because he is a great player. He has he has natural abilities. And it's a shame to see someone so talented waste it all away. And, and you know, I as uh, rumors have begun to circulate, you know, this is Cleveland, they're going to release him. And, and un unless... He gets himself together. No other team will touch him. You know what's amazing about you um, talking about this? You've been so consistent all week, I'm sorry, all year, week in and week out, about how you felt about this young man and how he really needs to get the help so right. he can be the best athlete and best man mm -hmm. and possibly best father and his future. Right. It's, it's more about his life and legacy than just this moment in life. You're exactly right, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I, I just like to reach out to Johnny. Please, you know, please do what you have to do to get your life together. Yeah. And the rest of well, them follow. And we know he's a great kid, and we beat him up all year. But, you know, he's asked for a lot of it, you know, with his actions and lack of accountability mm -hmm. and structure. But he is a great athlete, and we wish him all the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yeah, I just was brainstorming, just thinking about it all year long that we had there from segment to segment. I think I come to the conclusion, just the hard work that we put in on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis at Behavioral Health of the Palm Beaches because we're seeing how it all unfolds with uh, going through the clinical, the nursing, and then us uh, as BHTs and uh, supervisors hitting the ground, just, you know, seeing how these uh, clients coming in, how they, uh, their lives are broken, and uh, that we try to just rebu rebuild their lives as a team. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I see how hard you guys hit the ground running, trying to get the clients to come in and letting them know from the intervention standpoints, <coughs> and, uh, and that we reach out to them each and every segment, that uh, that we hear from them, and, uh, that's 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 the one that I love. You know what's really neat about that too is is how um, 
BHOP, Behavioral Health of Palm Beach, has, has kind of integrated us into the program. You know, mm -hmm. it's not something that they had to do because they actually had a machine here that worked and that was offering help to these people who were struggling with the, with addiction. But bringing us in and mm -hmm. allowing us as, as, as former professional uh, football players mm -hmm. to be a part of this program, to offer something it, it, like, like being teammates to mm -hmm. some of the guys that come in here mm -hmm. has just been really empowering and, and lifting me to a whole new level mm -hmm. with my walk in sobriety. Mm -hmm. Well, we've definitely earned the name of Pro Recovery Team. We have, and we do and it for free too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a great thing. We can help the Menzels out there, those guys that need help, so they can give us a call or they can reach out to us, and we can offer that help. We're all certified that's recovery true. coaches, so we can give them that help that they need, and that's that's our main purpose here is to reach out and get those guys the help they need so they don't have to hit rock bottom like mm -hmm. some of us have. So that's the key to that. And I'm, I'm glad we're here. I'm glad to be here with you guys. This has been great for me, gentlemen. So I'm looking forward to what next year has to be. Hey, Captain, you're the one that started this thing for us. I mean, Chris, Let's hear took, from you. Chris took the words right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, what I've really enjoyed is, yeah, all the topics and sharing mm -hmm. the information that we have and, and, and being available to help. But mm -hmm. seeing you guys develop and seeing mm -hmm. what this thing mm -hmm. is going to turn out to be, you know, Aww. watching it develop, <laughs> you know, that, that's been the, the most important and, and the most fruitful oh, for me. All right, oh. That's all I'll say. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> As a former offensive lineman in the NFL, I battled some of the biggest, meanest guys that ever played the game. But nothing was harder or more rewarding than taking that first step into detox at Behavioral Health of the Palm Beaches. And I know now what all those years playing professional football was preparing me for, and that was to give back this gift of recovery. Welcome back, and guys, here we are. It's time to pick your uh, your Super Bowl champion. Number 50. Everybody, everybody's ready, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 50. Absolutely. Well, it's it's all come down to this, Sean. Who, well, you who's know, your I'm, pick and why? Well, I'm the only defensive player up here, so you know, defense wins championships, and I'm, I'm all for it. I think we got <laughs> oh, two Lord. great defensive Way teams here. Um, Denver has the number one defense in the league. They have to game plan Newton, and if I think if they do that, I think they'd be victorious. I think Manning is going to show the best game he's had all year. He's saving it for this week here, the Super Bowl week. Uh, I'm going to go with Denver in this game. I just think they have the defense, and I think they're going to – Wade Phillips is going to do a great job game plan with Cam, Cam, New, Cam Newton, and I think we're going to come out victorious. I think that's the key. That's the 12th man. That's right. Is, is Wade Phillips. Exactly. Absolutely. Sure is. I like that. Mm. Oh, to me already? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know who I'm going to pick. It's been a great season. I was really excited to watch uh, Peyton Manning play. Uh, not necessarily good this year, but, but take the pressure off himself. Allow the defense to go out there and just really shine. And just like I've said for the last, what, 17, 18 weeks, uh, defense wins championships. And knowing that Gary Kubiak is in a place where he wants to be, he's excited about being back home. John Elway being the general manager and just being in charge. And just like I predicted, he was going to be a general manager. He'd win a Super Bowl championship doing that. And eventually he'll win one being an owner of the team. Mark my words on this one. Save this tape. But I'm choosing the Broncos because of the way they played all year. Defense is going to go out there and make a lot of big plays. And I really hope that Peyton Manning hangs it up after this winning this victory and just rides off in the sunset, baby. So I'm going Denver Broncos. By it's always a blowout in the Super Bowl, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm picking them by three this year. They'll win the big one. Mm -hmm. That's good. Grumpy I'm, <laughs> I'm going Denver. I, um, Denver also. Denver Broncos. Yeah, that defense. <laughs> that the defense. Uh, the way they played against Tom Brady was incredible. I've never seen anyone uh, put as much pressure on Brady as Denver did, and and as a result of that, they came out on top. And and. And as I mentioned earlier, Carolina, uh, Cam loves to run the ball, you know, running this read option. And I think that they're going to have a spy on him, mm -hmm. watching him, and make sure that he doesn't get out of the pocket. But in Peyton, I think this is possibly his last game of the year. But I, I think that he'll go out on top as a winner. And I see the Broncos winning by three points. Nice. Mm -hmm. wow. And you, can't, you wow. can't hurt Cam, but you can, you can definitely frustrate him. Well. I see y'all saying he's riding off in the sunset. Well, he going off in the sunset. I know what he did for the game with the NFL. He's riding off with an L. I'm going with, he's riding off with an L. I'm sorry. I'm going with Cam. I'm going to tell you that the key of this, they running the ball. You see Jonathan Stewart. That dude is a force. That's why pay all your boys last week, Tom Brady, didn't have no running game. He, if he had an honest running game, that would have been a different story. But, hey, it's, it's bygones, bygones. I'm going with Carolina. At least by seven. 
I'm with Chris. I'm going to go with Carolina. You know, I, I, I like Denver. I think they have a great defense. But what we hadn't talked about is the Panthers' defense. Exactly. They're playing. That's they're true. playing some pretty mm -hmm. good ball too. And I think Cam is uh, he's the great equalizer here. And uh, I don't think he's he's stopped. He, you can't stop the guy right now. Yeah. He's unstoppable. And, I, and I'm really proud of the way the team rallies around him. Yeah. You know, he get he he. He's, he's contagious, yeah, just like you said. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with the Panthers. Uh, I'm going with the Panthers by seven. I you, think it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. You know who we're missing? Paul Fletcher, the baseball player. I think we should see what he has to say about this, Randy. What do you think? Fletcher? Well, he's coming over here. Oh, 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 my God. Paul is in the house. Paul Paulie, Paulie, Paulie. Can you do anything with that shirt? Where's Paulie? Paulie. 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 <laughs> What is Paul? It's going to be Carolina. Oh, what? Yeah. You can Absolutely. sit back down. Get him Carolina's out of here. going to kill him. Get him out of here. <laughs> it's going to be like four. It's going to be a blowout. Carolina, mm -hmm. 14, 21. I don't Get know. Off my set. Set. Yeah. That's why we love you. That's right. Hey, and you know we want to end the segment by first. Let me say this, guys. It's been a pleasure doing this every week. You know we've had a lot of great topics and a lot of great subjects to talk about. Uh, you guys, you guys have, have just been great to work with. You know, I'm sorry that this is the last show, but it is. And, uh, you know, as always, we want to end this thing saying that if you or anybody that you know is suffering from this disease of addiction, we're here to help. There is hope, and we can help. You can get in touch with us at bhpalmbeach.com. We all have Facebook pages, and uh, we're, we're here for you. So till next year, we'll see you.